Are you looking for peace in your home? Are you sick and tired of fighting with the kids, dragging them from pillar to post, always being frustrated, always having arguments and having no peace? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about Positive Parenting 101 and how to bring peace to your home. Stay tuned because this is a good one. My name's Ben and this is Elevate. All right, folks, welcome back, welcome back. It is a spectacular day here today, as always. Your mate Buddy's coming for a little walk, hey? You're gonna come for a walk, buddy? Down into the bush, my beautiful backyard. Man, I clap on about this all the time, but what an incredible place. My father always used to say to me, Ben, you've got to be where your soul has peace. And he was right. You've got to, got to find and be where your soul has peace. And for me, that's right here. I just feel, I just feel like God's favourite living here, let me tell you. Well, in today's video, I'd like to share with you a couple of ways and a couple of key principles for getting peace into your home. Do you have kids? Do you have young kids? I'm a dad. I've got two boys. My boys are nine and almost 11. It's an awesome age. It's a really great fun age. And I tell you what, I'm so blessed. My kids are so well behaved. They really are awesome kids. But there are moments and there are some keys that I've figured out through a tremendous amount of personal growth that can help us manifest into our kids love and grace and peace and see that in our home rather than fighting and arguing and feeling like they're dragging the chain and all those feelings inside that just bring, I guess, bad energy, bad vibes, tenseness. We don't need that in our lives. There's enough going on already. Let's have peace in our homes. So tell me if this sounds familiar. It's bedtime. You've been fighting with your kids for the last 15 minutes. Kids, go and brush your teeth. It's time to go to bed. They're busy playing their game. They don't wanna go. You finally get them into bed. 10 minutes later, they're up. Oh, I've gotta to go to the toilet. Oh, I've gotta get a drink. Oh, I had a bad dream. Oh, tell us a story, whatever it might be. Maybe it's like this. Maybe you've gotta duck down to the shops to get a few items at the grocery store you forgot for dinner. But you know, as soon as you walk into the playroom and go and round your kids up, they're going to whinge and moan and complain. They're not going to stop doing what they're doing. They don't want to go to the shops. When you get to the shops, they want a chocolate. They want a McDonald's. They want to look at the toy store. They want to ride on this ride. It's just the point of frustration we don't need. Here's the key. Well, here's a few keys. And it can all be, I guess the premise of all this and the wrap up of all this is setting our kids up for success. It sounds foolish to think that we wouldn't do otherwise, but we actually do. As parents, we need to recognize and understand that rather than setting our kids up for success, so many times we actually set themselves and ourselves up for this sort of failure, this frustration, this hurt. We do this just by springing things on them and expecting them to fall into line. Now have a think, I guess take an empathetic approach, that is to put yourself in the shoes of children as if there's not enough stimulation in their world already. When they're engrossed in a game or riding their bike outside, playing with their friends, the last thing they wanna do is change what they're doing. They'll change when they're good and ready, thanks very much. So when you say, kids, we've gotta to go to the shop and pick up some groceries, they don't wanna stop. So I've found this works really well with my two boys. What I do is an hour before we go anywhere, I give them prior warning or half an hour. So boys, in half an hour, we've got to go to the grocery store and get a few items. And inevitably, you get the initial, oh, Dad, I don't want to go. So That's okay, I understand that, but it's something we have to do. So 30 minutes we're going, start thinking about wrapping up and what you want to get done in the next 30 minutes so we don't have issues when we go to leave. We're setting them up for success. We're giving them a framework. We're letting them know what's coming. Then in 15 minutes, I'll yell out down the hallway, boys, 15 minutes. They know what's coming. They know they've got 15 minutes to wrap up what they're doing. Five minutes before we go, boys, we're off in five minutes. 
start thinking about getting your shoes and socks on, we're out the door in five minutes. And it's at this point where step number two comes into it. We've had success this far, let's keep the success going. Step number two says, we give our children a very, very easy to understand framework or expectation of what's about to happen. And we tell them what we expect of them in that time. So kids, we're going to the shop shortly. Five minutes, we're leaving. When we get to the shops, I've only got to get a few items for dinner. So there's not gonna be any mucking about with toys. We're not getting any treats. We're not stopping at the park. We're just going in and coming out. And when we get home, you can help me unload the groceries from the car and then go and do whatever you want to do. You've got free time for the next hour. This is really important because it tells our kids not only what's coming, but it tells them when they can get back to doing what they were doing. And it also tells them what we expect of them. So we expect no moaning, no complaining, no mucking about with toys. We're not stopping at the park. We're going in, we're coming out. You're helping me unload when we get home and then you've got free time. So we set our kids up for success by giving them notice about when we're about to have a change in circumstance or situation. We set them up for success by telling them what to expect in an organised framework and what our expectations are of them. Finally, and this is really important, you can get all this nailed down and everything's gone brilliantly. And if your kids are like mine, the minute you step foot outside in the shops, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, Dad, I need the toilet. How frustrating is this? Have you been there, parents? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you feel me here? How many times have you been at the mall, the grocery store and the shops, and you see frustrated parents dragging kids in and out of bathrooms? What we need to do here is accept the fact that this is one of our responsibilities, to remove frustrations or potential frustrations in advance, setting ourselves and our kids up for success. So what do we know? We know that there's a continual touch point of frustration that every time we go somewhere, the kids need to go to the loo. That's completely understandable. They've been so engrossed in playing their games or riding their bikes or jumping on the trampoline or whatever they've been doing, they haven't thought about needing to go to the toilet. In fact, I say to my kids before we go, on the five minute warning, boys, five minutes to go, start time to start thinking about getting your shoes and socks on, going to the toilet. And inevitably they say, oh, I don't need to go to the toilet, dad. And I say, okay, just go and see what happens. Guess what happens? They go to the toilet. So we remove frustrations, we see them in advance, we take charge and take care of them. We remove them from the interaction, from the life of the child. There's so much stimulation at a shopping center, a child doesn't need any more. There's so much stimulation in an interaction in public, a child doesn't need any more. We've got enough as parents to deal with, not only going out and getting done what, what we set out to achieve, but making sure our kids are safe with us on the journey, making sure that they're respected and all the common decency that we've got to abide by living in a, in a, in a society. So can I just encourage you with this? It's really, really easy to set your kids up for success and to remove these points of frustration in your life. Give warnings before a change in situational circumstance. Tell your children what to expect and what is expected of them in this new change of circumstance. And finally, try to foresee by being reflective any potential touch points of frustration and do your best to remove them. Kids are humans too. You know, we drag them around from pillar to post and just expect them to comply and to fall into line. Just think about how that must feel. We know they're kids, we know they've got to learn, but when you start treating your children like human adults, you start communicating with them rather than talking at them, you start having conversations with them rather than giving instructions to them. You involve them in the process of decision making. You give them very firm boundaries and limited options, but you involve them. You speak like we would speak to one another. You wouldn't say to your partner, we're going to the shops, go get in the car now and I don't want to hear any arguing. No, you wouldn't. And your kids don't act like that because they're kids. They act like that because that's how we treat them. So say to your kids, kids, time to go to the shops five minutes to go, shoes and socks on, into the loo, jump in the car and away we go. When they get to the shops, they know what to expect, they know what's expected of them, they know when their free time is coming, and they also know 
that there's not going to be any frustration points or any distractions. So folks, I hope this information is a blessing to you. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed the journey of being a dad in the years I've had my boys. They are absolutely magnificent. And being reflective and thinking about these things and trying to make our kids' world a better place is something that's really, really close to my heart and obviously yours if you're watching this too. So my intention, my hope and prayer for this video is just that it blesses you and your home, you and your children, that maybe if you know someone who might benefit from it, you might consider sharing this video with them. Also, if you'd subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up, that would really help other people find this content who may be searching for it. And if there's anything else that you'd like to hear about on the subject of positive parenting, I've been fortunate enough to do uh, a lot of tertiary studies in the field of counselling and various helping professions. So uh, I just love this subject. Absolutely love it. So get in the comments down below and let me know if there's anything specifically you'd like me to talk about or share some tips on. Uh, but until next time, remember this. A hurting world does not need judgment. A hurting world needs love. So go out there and act in love. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I've really appreciated it. From me, my mate Buddy, and the beautiful, beautiful Queensland countryside. We'll see you next video. Much love and peace. Bye.